Welcome, any and all, to the Movie Club Collective, where every week we announce a new movie, and then we give you a week to watch it, and we hold a thoughtful discussion about the film. This week's film is There Will Be Blood, rated R, coming in at a brisk 2 hours and 38 minutes. Uh, this film came out in January of 2008. Um, let me introduce everybody. So, uh, here in the studio, we have, as always, Jose Venutolo. Hello. Back. Uh, joining us from Texas this week is Nick Landa, regular on the show. Hello. Uh, and joining us for the first time from upstate New York, uh, Utica, right, is Michael Smith. Hello. Welcome to the show. Or Thank I guess you. Mike. 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 Sorry. Mike Smith. How we'll refer to Whichever. you. Whichever. Whichever. Whatever you like. It's good. Um, <laughs> So there's a lot to unpack with this movie. Yeah, um, we should just not do the show. It's yeah, too it's much. just too much. <laughs> Skip yeah. it. All right, this is a good it. one. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, I guess we'll start with sort of the technical side, and then we'll ease our way into cool. the thematic side. Um, what is, uh, I guess, technically speaking, what is the most standout element for you? Uh, we'll start with you, Jose. What do you... What do you got? For I us? mean, for me, it's it's definitely cinematography. Like cinematography in this movie is is gorgeous. I mean, there's a lot of choices, of course, like uh, directorially wise, but um, but the way the way that the frame was painted for each different for each different scenario, you know, you have like like scenes that are completely like backlitted, and then you just see silhouettes, mm-hmm. and it just it just evokes that time, you know, in which in which like. The individuality of a person was not important more as the fact that there was a person doing something you know like and then it's that shadow of the past i don't know i love the cinematography in this film it is really good I it love won the cinematography it did oscar that's true it, it oh really oscar beat, no, beat no country doesn't deserve it which uh my pick was my pick was actually no country but this movie watching it, again it is gorgeous it's fantastic yeah it's pretty hard to it's pretty hard to beat uh just technically it's it's hard to beat the the blacks always look they're just like crushed down so much it's so clean like there's no there's no grain in any of these shots like it's ma- it's really masterful masterfully done technically yep um all done in computer there's nothing in that movie that's real yeah just like the jungle book it's all cg <laughs> it's all cg <laughs> they cg <laughs> daniel day Lu- uh, lewis and and the desert and yeah the actually that wasn't daniel day lewis that's tom cruise <laughs> playing daniel day lewis <laughs> oh he's playing no it's the, it's the dude who plays schmiegel yes <laughs> disney studios painted the fire yeah, yeah. they did <laughs> they did <laughs> yeah just individually in every frame uh what, what about you mike you got a favorite uh sort of technical part of this film um well, it's the score is great, mm. really dissonant, really uh, like left angles with like it, it's one of those great scores that doesn't quite tell you how to feel. You know, it's just it was ominous though. It yeah. kind of forces. You know, I feel it, like it does tell me how to feel. It tells me well, feel on edge, not, you know, like, like a cue, like not like a storyline cue. And there's more mm. of it's doing its own thing. It's very Kubrick. Reminds mm. me of The Shining a lot. Yeah, the Penderecki of The Shining is big. Yeah, before the show, we were actually comparing this to I mean, a different I'm, Kubrick I'm, movie. I'm, in, I'm interested in this. Like, this is already taking the yeah. direction that I thought I it was going to take. I kind of want to roll with it already. It's very Kubrick. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just don't want to jump into that until we hear Nick's uh, uh, take on it. The scores, yeah. I, I'd say both cinematography scores. I have the soundtrack. Like, Johnny Greenwood killed it from uh, from uh, Radiohead, right? I think he's the guitarist from Radiohead. He ki- I, uh, And they always work together. Uh, he did the score. What's cool <laughs> about the scores, This uh, a lot of it existed before the movie. And uh, PT, when he was writing it, was listening to that music because it's from like one of Johnny Greenwood's like side albums or something. A lot of the music. I didn't know that. And uh, PT was listening to it as he was writing, so I think that's why it really meshes super well. Yeah, it is such a a nice. It's mix. awesome. But yeah, especially the song. There's this montage part where he, they're like trailing, like looking. I think they're following the line, like mm-hmm. to like mm-hmm. do to the, the pipeline, and there's a lot of drums in it, and it's like really. And, like that's probably my favorite part, uh, like mixing between the cinematography and the music. I mean, it's, it's one of the few scenes in which in which you actually seen them around like green and blue because everything else is just dirt. Oh, it's so dead in them. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's just brown, brown and black. And... But you know, I want to mention yeah. something that Mike said. You know, like because I do agree 
uh, I do agree with what, when he said like um, that you don't know what to feel about the music. I feel that yes, eventually the music becomes ominous, but I feel that when the music starts, you are aware of it, but you don't know where it's gonna go, and suddenly builds into into something. It builds into a character. You go like, oh, I'm supposed to feel this way. I suppose, but it, when it kicks the first time, you don't know what it's actually cueing. And I feel that's yeah. what you what what Mike meant when he mentioned it. In terms of the music, I love the way that it opens the film. True. Yeah, just because, like, it immediately everything about the opening sets you on edge. Yeah. Just well, like it's just, just like from the title, s- like slow the music, right? And then it picks up well, when it like, cuts mm, to a wide of the scenario. It's got these really the long, mm-hmm. like warbling yeah. kind of maybe yeah. Yeah. Like, or something. Sometimes some nice strings here or there. That's just yeah. like it, it does a lot. There's, it's a very mercurial soundtrack, mm. and so there's so times. Through. Very much commenting on like a feeling or a speci- implied feeling, but then th- there's times where it doesn't always do that. Sometimes it's just kind of more ambiguous and it leaves you feeling uneasy because yeah. you're kind of. And it's interesting when you <laughs> you're seeing some crazy behavior. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's interesting <laughs> when you have a music that implies some sort of movement of action, and the music and then the visuals are just static on something that is not moving. It 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 made me feel, and then now we're we're jumping into what we were talking before. Um, the the opening of this of this film up until the first time that you hear a war being said it just felt like two thousand one space odyssey it felt like the beginning of two thousand one space odyssey it felt like primal you know if, yeah. if you know it's like the beginning discovery the, the dawn of something is the dawn of something yeah, true. It's, modern man yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not even yeah, sure. it's not even 1900 when the movie starts. Exactly, it's 1898. Yeah, it's like 18 something. Yeah, 1998. Yeah, it's like, it's and close. then it jumps to ni- 1902. Jumps four years later. Yeah, it does these those, those mm-hmm. jumps. And year. I do have to say, when you first see Daniel, he looks exactly like Jack Nicholson axing the door down in true, The Shining. True. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> but that's when you I don't just see that movie everywhere. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Totally. I mean, uh, also, like, I think Shining a big thing is like man versus like the environment. And this movie in the beginning, it just that's how it starts. Like the very first time you hear the music go crazy, it cuts to a wall. It's after I think he breaks his leg. Oh, or something, yeah. Or maybe. I love that. Shining and it just, just cuts to a wall. And then it's like crazy music. Mm-hmm. And, and these two like, heels. Yeah, it's him versus the world. It's just uh, like, he holy crap. He's, he's yeah. so on his own, also. I want to I know what those two heels mean. I want to I wanna actually ask somebody who purposely those put two them what? here. The two heels, because, you know, like when the music starts, starts with this, the two I heels. I think it's just that, like, it goes, it goes back to it. What true. are those heels? What, what do they, because, you know, sometimes directors do go the crazy thing represent? and they go like, oh, this is the mountain of Olympus and the other is the mountain of something where a human <laughs> came. And then, you know, like they have this crazy conversation. I want to know if it's just like, oh, there was just nice two heels. or the yeah, I think it was just the land. It's like it that's the land. enemy. But, <laughs> What's that? I need a martini now. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go there. Yeah. We should go there. We should go there. Um, Let's move on. Yeah, well, yeah. I, there's a lot of themes in this movie. Um, oh, there's yeah. a lot of really interesting themes. I'm kind of curious, like, what are some of the ones that that stand out to you the most? Because mm-hmm. there's there's clearly like a number of layers going on. But like, what are the big ones that stand out to you guys? Uh, well, what about you, Mike? What do you? What hits you? sort of the um, hardest what hits me the most because of i'm a huge paul thomas anderson fan and it happens again and again is the family element mm. even though there's a lot of stuff going on in this movie about like america at, at large and i think it was one of those movies that was made like it's a period piece but it was about the america yeah 2007 very very much but it's still another depiction of like a father a very complicated dark fraught Father son relationship. It's a good Father's Day episode. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Good Father's Day. Family you know, in yeah. general in this movie is interesting and sort of this idea of blood ties and how he doesn't have any blood ties to anybody in the no. film. But. And it's not even it's, his real son. Yeah, it's not his real son. Yeah. It's not his real brother. Like. Fractured. Yeah. Uh, I, and I love at the end how Eli is like, we're brothers now through marriage, right? Like, we're family. Um, and they are probably the two most similar characters. Mm-hmm. Um, they are brothers in a way, but but yeah, none of the fa- all of the family is an illusion. It's it's yeah, it's an interesting commentary. So what hit you? Something <coughs> hit you harder than family? It's um, yes, yes, it is. I mean, eventually, eventually, you can, you can, you eventually when. As the film progresses, you understand that he is he he longs for family. He longs for that, and it makes me think about the title. There will be blood. Will be will does that refer to the oil? Does that refer to the fact that 
in some sort of where there will be family, there will be a connection between two people, or it's just simply just there will be blood because it just talks about violence. I mean, it has different it's, connotations. I'm going to go with all of the above. But, yes, but um, but the thing that struck me the most was, uh, and this is something that, you know, like it's just that, that I found it beautifully, beautifully done, is that um, back then, when you had a business, when you had an enterprise, when you had something, you get down, on, you, you get down to the ground, you get your hands dirty. Like these guys build those empires by being there, by keeping an eye. Right now, we just have guys with a suit and, a, and a, they never visit a site. They just hire somebody and then an engineer goes. And then the magic of it, I mean, everything has been so industrialized that there is no connection between human and ground. You just like you pay something in a, in a big city, you never go to the field, but then there is the guy who goes to the fields and do the thing. But these people build it from the ground. These guys are pioneers. This is the dawn of what we know today. I mean, oil. Yeah. Oil is it's everything right now. It's, it's it like, is the blood. It is the blood. It is the blood that flows through like modern society. What about I'm, you, Nick? I'm, I'm sorry. It's like everybody um, else is like apologize. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think Mike was hitting it. Uh, the biggest thing for me is, uh, it's, I think it's like the story of America. Uh, like, absolutely. It's just like, you know, self-made man. I think it still has to do with today. Like, you get people who make little independent businesses. It's just the guy started off mining for gold in like a dark hole with nobody. And then he becomes, you know, and he fights the tycoons. He's like, doesn't want to be part of the railroads and like, you know, in the beginning, a baby's, like, pretty much baptized in oil. Yes. Like, when they put the oil cross on his head, like, it's totally about, you know, money, the, the you know, how, you know, it, yeah. independent he does have the, he does industrialization have that very in the States and the self-made spirit. man. It's a christening. Yeah. It's a christening. And also, like, then, you know, uh, him and Eli, like, you know, you were saying, John, like, they're totally the same. Like, the one guy's religion, one guy's business, but at the end of the day, they're both business con men. Like, they're yes. both selling something. I have something to say about that, especially because upon recent viewings, like in the last couple of years, I like that there is um, a kind of comparison between Plainview, who we have seen literally go through like these brutal physical struggles, hard, hardworking man uh, going up against who is essentially a charlatan, like a performance artist, essentially. Like the movie, I don't think has much ambiguity. On its feelings about religion, yeah. particularly, I don't really, I don't think it really believes that Paul Dano is, you know, is purely religious. Yeah, <laughs> it's like he seems like a performer, and he and he seems like um, Tom Cruise in Magnolia, and he seems yeah, totally like Mr. Dodd in The Master, and The Master is also about another like a charlatan up against a guy who's been through fucking war and is broken, like a smashed man. <laughs> like so, there's these two. It's I don't know. I the, love that people may or not side with. Or, I love that know. Daniel Day Lewis starts old in this movie. Like he's already clearly yes. been through yeah, been a lot before <laughs> before we see him. You know, like he's already You're just worn and haggard. And this is just like reiterating what just like the amount that it takes to do this is pretty. It's pretty staggering. Um, it's a lot of donnings. It has a lot of like because like on one a side a, a donnings like like you know the beginnings. Uh, and just oh. and trying to like use the ing mm. verb on the word "don," okay. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, um, because you have like technically uh, Paul Dano's character, like Eli, it's what it it would be the dawn of the televangelist. It would be the dawn of the guy who lives out of doing that, who makes who yeah. makes religion actually well, a business. They're both very similar salesmen. They just <clears throat> yes. have different tactics. Yeah, like you know, Daniel Day Lewis is putting on this very sort of fake family man persona where he's like, you can relate to me. I'm just, you know, I'm a hard working regular Joe. We could have a beer together. Like he yeah. can run for yeah, president, yeah, yeah. this guy. Um, you know, I've come across, I love the, I've come across <laughs> yeah. half our great state to be here. Like his, he's I, got, I like the part where, where Paul goes to him and Paul's like, which church are you part of? He's like, I like them all. I like all. They're, they're like all cool. amazing. It's like I'm not part of one. I like them all. <laughs> Don't lose anyone. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm not going to alienate a single possible person. <laughs> he's so might, good in that. You know, he makes me like laugh so much in that movie. Like them all. Yeah. yeah like them all. Um, yeah. And my favorite theme is kind of along these lines with the two of them. And just that, like, I find sociopathy really fascinating. Um, and this is such a study of like sociopaths because both yeah. Daniel Day Lewis and Eli or Plainview and Eli are they're both just like clearly they're ambitious 
and they're willing to put on whatever face they need to, but like they do have their own, like their ambition is sacred to them, mm-hmm. and like anything that like, you know, there are there are like there is a limit to like what they'll what they're willing to give up to hold on to that, um, and just like their tit for tat, like they both sort of I think early on they both see each other for what they are. Like they can see, from early, from they can early. see through the veneer of the other one immediately. Um, before the show, we were kind of talking. You mentioned the campfire scene. Um, yes, you want to just tell With me the brother. Um, no, 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 no. After that, uh, you want to. It's uh, when it's when uh, <laughs> after Eli comes and he tells them about the about you know the land and he comes and he he pretends that they're they're hunting for quail. So then he, they go. Oh, that one. Yeah, they go. Yeah. They, and then you see Eli for the first time in the ranch. He comes to meet him because so far you haven't seen him. You don't know, like, is this his ranch or not? And then when he is with the son and they're like, the son is like digging or the son is doing some. some yeah, he's like camping. Yeah, he's like camping. And, uh, and then Eli comes and he never breaks eye contact with Eli. Like the moment he approaches, it, approaches him, he starts looking at him and then, and then he just looks at him until he is. The cam- you don't see it in the camera because they're always on Daniel Day Lewis, mm-hmm. but he is like uh, what, what you say when somebody's just looking at you. It's like probing with his eyes, like it's, yeah, it's, probing. It's, yeah, probing. It's like constantly. He doesn't he doesn't lose sight on, of, of Eli until Eli leaves, and it reminded me of predators. You know, like when you have a predator in the wild and he sees another animal, it's expecting the other animal to be a predator too, so it never yeah. breaks eye contact. So this guy. This guy, that from the beginning of the movie, Eli is the only other predator he acknowledges. Eli is one of yeah. the only other proactive people in the film, <clears throat> period. Almost everybody is very passive and very reactive. Um, well, they're followers. They're followers, so yeah. He's, like, doing his and own Eli, thing. And yeah. Eli, like, in just in that first scene, he, he comes out of his way to, like, greet them and, like, yeah. put his own presence there that, yes. like, you know... I, I kind of like Daniel's here. reaction though, because it, it's almost as if he thinks it's Paul too. He's like, "Who the fuck?" Yeah, it's like, like "Wait a minute!" There's that moment yeah, where like, it's like, "I didn't know that was gonna be this yeah, twin." Yeah. The twin, uh, the twin thing is nice. Um, it's bizarre. That's so bizarre. It is bizarre. Just yeah. have, and never really yeah. make anything of it. It's yeah, they strange. yeah they just kind of leave it mm-hmm. hanging. But it is a night. It does something for. It makes you wary of him immediately. You go like. Yeah, wait, it's wait like, yeah, it's like, is, is this, this Paul just bullshitting? Or? Yeah, did Paul just... I think, it, yeah, the whole first time I saw it, I'm like, he killed the wrong guy. I know he yeah. killed the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. But nothing ever happens, you know, it's just... Yeah. Um, I think the guy got recast. I think it was just somebody who got recast. I was reading about it, and it was just simply pulling Paul in to do that as well. Oh, really? Oh, you're kidding me. Yeah. That's interesting. No, it worked for the best. Yeah, I think it just I, adds an uncertainty. Playing it. I didn't recognize the name, but it was somebody who... And there had been some sort of... Um, arguing about like Daniel Day Lewis said he was too intimidating, you know. Oh, well, the the actor thought Daniel Day Lewis was too intimidating and interesting, but like no, I out. never said that. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. Very strange story. You know, like you never I, know what to believe with these behind the scenes. A story. year a year after this movie came out is when I moved to when I moved to America, and I actually I went to the movie theater like I was just fresh here, and I went to the movie theater, and Paul Dano was there. He was on a date. It was a girl next to him. Oh, like, saw oh wow. Like, I saw him. It's like, oh, wow, this is America. I'm finding already stars everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> he went to yeah. NIFA, too. Yeah, that's what I heard. They like to say that because nobody famous one. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah. I like the, I wanted to, I brought up this scene because I also like the, the second scene with, with Paul Dano where it's the, the dealing where he like clearly wants to deal with a father who's just ready to roll oh, the over dinner his property. Scene? Yeah, mm-hmm. the dinner scene. Like yeah. he clearly wants to just deal, yeah. and then he's trying to Paul bullshit him about like, quails. Yeah, Paul, w- <laughs> he doesn't leave the table, and it's yeah. just like his. He sits at the end of the table, also like in a position yeah, of authority. Like a, yeah, um, like he's the real head of the family. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I I like the dynamic between uh, uh, Eli and his father, whose father is just such like a pushover compared to. Compared to him, he's just yeah. yeah. Towards Eli, though, he takes it out on uh, the daughter. Yeah, when he and when he yeah. just when he just climbs on the table and then just goes and assaults the father. It's like you are stupid, stupid man. It's like oh, yeah, God. yeah. Like, oh, God. The father gets punked by everyone. Yeah. Yes, I love the scene where he's talking to the daughter. Yeah, and he's like, "You're not going to get hit anymore." And then the no camera just cuts, and the dad is right there the whole I time. I know. He's just like 
not talking to him, but clearly yeah, talking to him. Clearly, yeah. He just stares at him at the. Yeah, I love that. Mm, that's marvelous. Right. It's marvelous. He just put his dick on the table. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can say that. We can, in, say, we can say that. You know, it's a thing. <laughs> this movie, like, has such a good pace to it, also. Like, it. It both feels like a really long movie and it just goes by like in a minute. It's true. So we've got a really interesting thing going on there. I think it's because the structure is really like really on point. Like like li- I think it's like literally on the halfway point is when the brother arrives. Mm. Like the key moments happen at like key moments. The structure is really good of it. And then like I think a, it's like it's like a novelistic kind totally. of Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Timeline. With an epilogue as well, you know, there is like a kind of an overture and an epilogue and then like some middle acts, you know, but it has a very, it's, it takes its own time to tell its story. It does kind of fall into five act structure more than it does into like three. Let me ask you both. Well, the whole climax (laughs) moments are like, you know, they're, they feel like a different movie in a way is because you're just not in the desert anymore and you're not, you know, he's. Yeah. Your color palette changes radically. Yes. And a bowling alley is bizarre what a great yeah i forgot how long the ending was when i was watching it this time i was paying attention to like the timeline and then when it cuts to the wedding of the sun i was like oh wow i from that point on is like 20 25 minutes Mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel like it but like yeah they it's like i it was really interesting because i always just felt like it was like i don't know 15 minutes but he really packs a lot and after that time jump yeah and if the movie is often labeled an epic and I don't, I've never quite agreed with that because there isn't like, there's not much heroicism. There's not a lot, it's no adventuring. There's no, it's, it's like this long character study that is put, like laid against what an epic film would normally have as, as its narrative ups and downs. It doesn't, but it not too much happens, particularly when you're just watching one man's progress and his, you know, little he's battles, he's you know, yeah, totally. <laughs> It's uh, never felt like an epic to me on that level. It's felt like a claustrophobic. Yeah. On that level, something claustrophobic. like Boogie Nights is closer to that definition. Magnolia. Yeah. Epic. Mm-hmm. Right, totally. I, I have to agree. No, I have to agree. Claustrophobic. Yeah, it's 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 interesting because you're mentioning something. It's an open. It's all open space, and you still feel trapped inside. I mean, you don't oh. see anything about civilization, and then every time they go into civilization, every time they go to a restaurant, they go to anywhere, it's always long lenses, always like closed shots. You never see the yeah, entire. Yeah, you don't room. get wides of interiors because you know, it's not his environment. Like he's he's like he's a man of the land. You know, he's a man like that's like he's all, every every big shot that they have. Every everything when you see him full body is when he's out in the field doing what he does best and then when he goes back in in this movie there's no characters essentially there's him and he's the only one you truly get to know but even then you don't know anything about his past Mm -hmm. i don't like to talk about a lot of vagueness about him you know and Mm -hmm. that's why it also feels claustrophobic is just there's not a lot of people in this movie yeah you don't get a lot of other perspective yeah no and he is batshit crazy so he yeah. is, he is, I mean, although I, I mean, I want to ask this because I do feel that he felt, he, f- he, he loved the kid. There is a tragedy to his story in that yeah, like, well, he is human. So he does. Yeah, and he does have, he does have the desire <laughs> Kinda, for yeah. family, he but like yeah. when he gets what he thinks he wants, it still just doesn't make him any happier. Mm-hmm. So like, and I do think that there's a tragic element there that like he did have a vision of what he wanted from his ambition. And I think that he did want to share his empire with the kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then when he's broken, it's like, ah, oh, well now you're not. Yeah. It, you're at not one point tool. it became either family or the empire and he chose empire. Like, it kind of was that. I think in the beginning there was some love. He was obviously using the son to better stuff, but he was also Absolutely. educating him and you could tell there was something. But yeah. At some point it was one or the yeah. other and he chose. You he know, wanted to like, he wanted to useful. give. The, so he just cards yeah. immediately. So yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, it's used to me. I'm sorry, but you know. Yeah, that next. seems rough when he leaves him on the train. It's just like, and oh, then he's like walking so alongside yeah. and Great. just not looking at him. Oh, yeah. just yeah, brutal. To that. Although, although I do have to say one thing. Like, I felt, I felt that that when the when the son comes back uh, at, at, at the end of the film, has the conversation. I'm, I'm gonna go to Mexico. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start my own business and blah blah. And then he just, you know, like you betrayed me, blah blah blah. And then you're just, uh, just what? Uh, it's a kid in a basket, or bastard a bastard, in a basket, a bastard in a basket, or from Bast- a basket. Yeah, a, a fr- yeah, yeah, a bastard from a basket. Um, and I'm f- like, a part of me feels that he's just giving him the last gift as a father. It's like you, like I am damaged goods. Like I, I built an empire. 
I am not happy. You want to follow my step. I'm going to I'm going to catapult you as far away as you as you can as I as I can from me because I will destroy your life. So I prefer to just tell you that you're a bastard in basket and then you just go find your freaking life. You're clearly in love, you like like whatever, but you don't want to be around me. I think that he's doing it. <laughs> In order to save him, I think he's doing. Uh, it I don't know. I, don't know. I, I feel like he's, I feel. he's past that. You think point. it's just think so? for me? I think it's just literally like he's the tycoon. Tycoon, you know, it's like, hey, you versus me. You're in my field, like you know. That's, you know, in those days, especially, man, when the tycoons around, like the Rockefellers and the you know Carnegies and all that shit, it was cutthroat. And I feel like that's what it's really showing. It's like you could be his son, and it doesn't matter. Like you're gonna go up against me. Like no. You have a well, different view, Mike. I, I remember showing this, not a different view, because I don't know. There's no conclusive sure. evidence of any of that. That's like something you have to put in yourself and draw conclusions. But I remember watching this movie with my mother the first time I showed it to my parents. And my mom wanted to like Plainview so much throughout the movie, just like, and pity him, you know, and make think like there's a human being in there. And by the end of the movie, she was just like, no, he's he's a monster. <laughs> Yeah. He's not a good yeah. man. He's crazy. I think he sold his soul in the beginning. Like, I think there's a really cool shot where, like, first of all, starts he's in blackness, and then he like falls when he's going up. He's going into the light, and then he literally falls. The thing breaks, and he falls like straight into like pitch black. And then you know, it's it's kind of like he's, and then he finds gold at the bottom. And it's kind of like you know, from the beginning on, it's like he sold his soul to the devil. He got the gold, and then he's you know he's lost. He's like gone. I think from the beginning he's he's done. And then the movie is just the de-evolution from there of that the, the notion of it the film had always felt to me like 2001 mm-hmm. when i first saw it in the theater that that kind of uh dialogue list beginning um and images of like the monolith the first time he was drawing mm-hmm. oh the, the yeah oh, like, this is very great and i but even by the end of the movie there had been another comment to me about this is not an evolutionary story. It's a revert. It's revert. He, it goes back in a loop because by the end he is so simian. He's he's yeah. acting like yeah, a yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, pin, and it's yeah. barbarism, and it's just like ah, ah like back to bones. That's and smashing true. Things. That his own ambition is destroyed. That. That's you true. Know, he's done it. He ties. And it's like a comment, like, even the line, I'm finished. You know, that's such a comment about man. Modern. It's a very scathing re- view of modern man and mm. capitalism. It's like I don't think it's ambiguous on that level, which I love about it. It's very you, angry. You know, another thing. Another thing that I can like, I, I can draw from this movie. It's like he's the kind of guy, and I don't know if you guys at some point in your life have somebody told you this. Like you, you're always striving and and fighting and working in order to put yourself in a position in which you can do what, what you want to do. And then when, and then that, ne- that, mo- that moment never comes. It's, just, it's like at the end of his he life. He gets his moment. He wants to be removed from people. It's and- true. But at the end of his life, it's like he strives so much for something that, that he's ent- like you, when you get too used to work, then, then you, you stop working and then suddenly it doesn't feel like life anymore. Like it's that, it's that kind of like, if he's not out there in the field, he's miserable. Like he needs to be, it's like the guy who got everything he wanted. Then you don't you don't get to be happy for a, a, forever. You get to just not have a dream anymore. Yeah, mm. you yeah. know what I mean. It's, it's like in like, yeah, totally. Dawn of the Dead. They get the in Dawn of the Dead. They get the mall, and they get all the stores, mm-hmm. and they get all the, the fur coats. But then they realize it's like, well, now what are we doing with ourselves? Yes, exactly. It just, we like, are not living our lives. We're not surviving. We're just biding time now. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, uh, um, scene on the, in the movie? John? Well, before we get to favorite scene. Oh, you don't want to get to the favorite? Uh, not, yet? not quite yet. Favorite. Um, I, uh, there's a lot of uh, good motifs that repeat throughout the film. One of the ones that I like a lot is is just the Daniel Day Lewis passed out on the floor, drunk. He's just like mm-hmm. absolutely trashed, probably still drunk. And then someone always comes in and like has to shake him awake. Like the use of alcohol as yes, yeah. as this like futile escapism is an is a cool. Even in the beginning, when he first meets the baby, the very first thing he does is try to offer the baby alcohol it, when it's yeah. Alcohol is used yeah. to both like solve my problem with the baby to like you know or put yeah, the it's kid just to a sleep. Way of escape. You know, I'll 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 put the kid to sleep to get him out of my hair. I'll drink it myself so that I don't so that I can be oblivious. But then, like life always comes knocking, and it's like, you know, it happens. When the guy dies, it's like he wakes up, somebody's dead. And you immediately, you have no time to like get up and shake it off. Like yeah, you just have to deal with it while you're still drunk slash hungover. 
Um, and it happens at least three major points. It mm. happens there. Um, it happens, of course, at the end when Paul Dano comes and is yeah. like, I'm going to bother you and get myself killed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Right? Um, and then what was the... It's when uh, when he kills the brother or the supposed brother. Yeah, yeah, he when, gets yeah once he kills the brother and he gets woken up by the guy. And that's always weird that the guy, like, does he know he murdered the yeah, dude? Yeah, he gives him the gun. Yeah, he gives he's him the like, gun. He's like, I know what you did. And it's like, I was always very thrown off by that scene just in terms of, like, where are, where the hell are we? Because we're at the coast in Texas and we're at a party and then we're, like, back on the ranch. Like, yeah. the, the whatever, we'll... William something. It's indicative, mm-hmm. it's indicative of like Paul Thomas Anderson to this this movie for me was like a major divide. And well, it is. It's like a major stylistic divide from films Anderson had made before, and now this. These are like more austere. They're kind of there. There's a lot of vague uh, narrative stuff going on that you have to kind of fill in on your own. Whereas in like he was making exuberant like ensemble films that were. You know, they had big showy performances and mm-hmm. the, indulging in them. Like this is much more, like even the, the master as well and inherit vice. They're just kind of there's a lot of stuff going on. You don't really know what to trust as mm-hmm. far as the movie. You know, is going. You want to go to favorite scenes? I want to go to favorite right, scenes. Right. I have some things to say about favorite I, scenes. Okay, so. um, I have two kind of favorites. Maybe this is cheating, but I like them for different reasons. Um, aesthetically, my favorite scene is when the oil derrick's burning down at night, just some of the most beautiful shots ever are in that scene. The one with a piece of the movie. Yeah. The, the one with the red ring around, uh, like around the lens, it's like looking right at the oil derrick that's burning. Mm. It's got like a, just this, Oh red yeah, yeah, ring yeah, yeah. Of, of, uh, just diffused light coming in. Mm-hmm. That one's, that one's really beautiful. Um, so I love that scene. And I also love the music in that scene with the clacking. <laughs> It's got that Passive, yeah. Um, so that's my favorite scene just from, like, you know, aesthetically. Um, my other favorite scene, though, is when he has to go to church and get baptized and join the Absolutely. church of the third Absolutely. I was waiting for some, Yeah, that's like... <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks for stealing yeah. it, John. Sorry. Uh, Performance-wise, yeah, it's my favorite scene from <laughs> Daniel. It is the funniest scene in the movie. It's so, <laughs> so good. So good. He has such a good turn in it too, where he just like I drink the blood of the Lord. <laughs> He's like, just okay. so uh, he has to warm up to it, and then he has to do something that he. It's the one time he really has to suck it up and do something he doesn't want yeah. to do. Like and he's, I think it does affect him. I think it affect when he's yeah, finally absolutely. screaming, "I have abandoned my child." It's it. I think within the performance, you can see it hitting him. Yes, it mm-hmm. hits him. It, and it gets me very emotionally when I'm watching the movie because to me that's such a Paul Thomas Anderson scene. Mm. Uh, just like a, a drawn out very long emotional it's almost like a like monologue a like it's just it's it's big and, it, and it's yeah. like it's indulgent and it's moving and, and I, funny. Lo- I love funny the and turn when he slaps hard. him and it's just like as soon as he slaps him Daniel J. Lewis yeah. is just kind of like the has ang- this fuck it look he's just like oh, okay yeah alright now we're yeah. having yeah. fun yeah. like uh yeah. Yeah. Get me out of totally shifts yeah. Yeah, yeah, he does. He he yeah. he finds it amusing. He finds it, and then he keeps repeating to himself, "You have an oil, uh, you have um, the pipe." He like that's the last thing he says before he stands up. He goes like, "I got, a, I got the pipe. I got the." Does he say that? Yeah, he said. He said like, "Like I got." Yeah, the, yeah. He he says it to him. Yeah. He says it to him. Yeah, I think it's interesting that like, it feels like the slaps don't phase him. Like, yeah, he's just like to him. I mean, the guy's been through so much. He's broken his legs. He's done this. He's just like, okay, yeah, just slap me, do whatever. It's yeah. up this until the, pettiness the sun coming stuff back where it's like, me. now I can't. That's the stuff that he can't take is like the the, the, the real shit, the, him yeah. abandoning his son. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, you know, like the ne- in the next scene, he brings the son back. It clearly yeah. made him feel something. He brings the son back. He keeps asking he for it. He tries. Him. Like, I do feel like... He tries, like but it's... It's, but a, it it's a quick... Yeah. But he also doesn't try. Like, the thing with the son is just that, like, he doesn't bother to try and learn sign right. language at mm-hmm. all or be a yeah, part exactly. of the kid even the little girl does oh, and he yeah. can't even yeah mm-hmm. um i think a scene that follows like that scene's one of my favorite but the one that kind of goes hand in hand with it is the other one where it's like the reverse slap where uh 
uh, Daniel Day Lewis is like smacking the shit out of yes. uh, oh, I love Eli and putting him in the mud. Those two kind of go hand in hand, and I love them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They're, 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 they're payback. Yeah, yeah. They're, one yeah. is the payback for the other. They're one. so petty. Yeah, they get. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, what, not, you know, it's just a back and forth. Yeah. What do you guys think about like his relationship with the girl? Like, like he he always favored the little the, what 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 was her name? Uh, Rose was it? I forget her name actually. I, but he they, was he always treated her part. well. What's that, Mike? Women don't play a large part in this movie, like which is an, another very interesting thing for him. And she does stick out because you do think there's going to be more coming from her character and what he tries to do to stick up for her. But it's it's bizarre. It's just kind of yeah. tucked he, away as well, you know. But well, she's pure like H W. Also, like you know, the father's a is a dick. <clears throat> Eli's a piece of crap, and you know. I think that you know well, what, H H W is the first one that brings attention to her yes. by telling by telling him that the dad hits her. Mm -hmm. and he's like okay that like at that point he's like which one she's that's the little one and like from then on he pays attention to her so i do yeah. think it part of it is like an attempt to give his son something um yeah. maybe I, i just i just feel like you know when he said when he said to the brothers like most people i don't like i hate everybody i don't want people to succeed he said i'm in a, i'm 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 uh I'm in a battle against myself. I'm I'm competing against myself. Like he doesn't he doesn't like to see other people competing, which is kind of like speaking the plot, or speaking the subtext of it. But I didn't mind it because I like those conversations do happen sometimes. But I think that he said sometimes it's difficult to see things that I like on people, and I think that he saw this girl, and he's kind of thinking like this is the only person has that has never approached me. Because well, he needs anything yeah, from I think me, he hit it. so then exactly. So it's like I like this person. This person, yeah. it's not, it's neither. Threatening. So then he feels like he needs to protect that. Maybe not full force, but he does take a stand against that. And he always treated her with with kindness. And you know, like he's always like she hugs him, and then you you can see that he likes it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it was interesting. I do kind of want to talk about that scene where he confesses to the brother how he feels because I had I have sort of conflicting feelings about that scene because one it is does seem like it's telling us stuff we already know like we can already tell that he despises everyone around him so it is kind of speaking the subtext but at the same time like it is important in terms of like he's opening himself up to somebody which is right, something which, he doesn't yeah. really well, do and i like that it shows that he has no illusions about what kind of a sociopath he is he literally knows Lays it, it and is able to and able to, to Yeah. Without any real reservations, just say I hate people. <laughs> like and it's like I just that I don't want to be around them. It's, mm -hmm. it's very conscious. It's not a subconscious thing that he's doing. It's not. It's as much of a a goal as it is becoming rich. You know, and it kind of makes you wonder how many people out there are actually because you know, like the, the sociopath, they learn to emulate. They understand. They see you. They know well, what you're feeling. They know how to shaped, react to it. I think they've shaped the world uh, many sociopaths? times over. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Because they. Oftentimes, if they are ambitious, they have this chameleon-like ability to kind of see what makes people tick and use that, you know, against people that have just sort of a more normal level of empathy. Um, so I do think that, like, you know, sociopaths have shaped a lot of modern industry. And I think that, you know, it's not an accident <laughs> that, you know, in terms of this movie being commentary on America and American industry, I, you know, the fact that he is <laughs> maybe so not sociopathic. sociopaths completely, but maybe agoraphobes. Maybe. Agoraphobes. 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 Sociopath is pretty extreme. It's, I, know. I, he's, he clearly is one though. Like he's yes, willing he to is. murder without, well, you know, without reservation. If, if it calls for, like he has no real reservation about death or feelings of pity about death. Like his guy dies. Yeah. And it's just a problem I have to deal with. Um, <laughs> So, like, I, you know, I don't think it's a stretch to call him a sociopath. There is a level. No, there is a level of sociop sociopathy. The or, you know, like, but yeah, but I mean, it's, it's interesting because he poses a lot of questions. Like, these people, like, like according to this movie, this is the people who were pioneers. These people who build things that we now take for granted. There have been a lot of studies granted. in recent years. I've seen in the last couple of years that, you know, talk about um, CEOs being more likely to be sociopathic. sociopathic. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Just because of what it takes... To if, get that position and to hold that position. The absence. Well, I mean, pure capitalism is like just making yourself. So there's an element of selfish 
uniqueness that goes with it. There's not really like, oh, let's do something for the common good. You know, like pure, pure, yeah. pure capitalism is I'm number one. Yeah, we'll make schools and put a road to the church. Whatever you want to hear. Look, I I will go as far, and then John John will just John. I mean, he knows he knows that this is kind of like my kind of thought, but I will go as far as even say that that it is it is probably more common for these people to advance humanity to the next level than it is for a person that is just a regular human being. It's like in this movie, it is very clear that even when we can say, oh, everybody's equal, everybody has the same chance, there is clearly people who are just to follow and clearly people who are just to lead. And the people who are just to lead are most likely to be sociopaths because if they get emotionally... Definitely according com- to this movie. If they get emotionally compromised with things, then you can you can achieve empires. You can just conquer countries, build things. You know, like you, you, you need that kind of... You need that kind of disconnection you need it, from but you humanity. You need it in doses. I think that's what the movie says because when you have too much... Then it's just no, yeah. Then you, know, you crumble. Then it's you like crumble. too much of one thing either way is crazy. You you got to have that balance at the end. I mean, you need to remember also there is a moment in which if you start emulating something so much, then you eventually become that something. I mean, he he emulated human beings so much that eventually he looked like one, act like one, quacked like one. You know, like when push comes to shove, then he shows his true colors. But most of the time, people go, "Oh, he's just a nice guy. He's just like a businessman." But these people really drive the world. It's what I love about right. him too is that he's the movie for all it shows of, of his ambition and its success. He is extremely petty. Mm, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, how many years have gone by since he's seen Eli before yeah, totally. still wanting to? I'm going to kill you. You know, it's like that long seat. Any more, any mature, successful man. And he's would clearly have kept like, tabs on oh, him. Yeah. And the scene where yes. he puts the napkin on his head. He's so yes. petty there. Mm-hmm. Long, he's, yeah. <laughs> He's like, Standard Oil called yesterday. <laughs> I love that scene. I'm going to come into your home and I'm going to yeah. kill you. I <laughs> love that guy's reaction, by the way. It seems like that is so the legit. appropriate reaction. I'm like, yeah, what like, are you? What the... Why are you acting crazy? Yeah, what is... Why exactly? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what? What did just happen right now? And then he holds that grudge. It's like you don't yeah. tell me how to run my family or what. It's like, but I haven't got. We haven't got to like. Um, we were on favorite scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> uh, it, people have different favorite scenes than the ones I listed. What about Nick? You got no. My, I agreed. It was it was those two. It's the baptism and the uh, one where he smacks around Eli in the in the in the, in the, in the, mug, the where he pretty much baptizes Eli in the mug, yes. Or that's, in the oil. That's interesting. Yeah, he does. That's true. He does. He but about you, Mike? Those are nice pair of scenes. We've mentioned I, that the whole movie is kind of great scenes with then sort of lulls so the mm. great scenes tend to stick out not lulls but like there's yeah, set yeah. pieces and it eases you into them too and it's easy to choose those because you're it's such a long movie and you want those releases you want those kinds of bang finally you know mm. tension rising but i love um i guess one of the my favorite scenes it's not even a scene particularly it's just like a little segue is because it always makes me extremely uncomfortable is when they're in a bar of some kind and it's just a close-up of uh um plain view and he's starting to surmise that his brother isn't his brother mm-hmm. it's just all mm. it's a brothel so here's all brothel. of this party going on around yeah. him and the brother is just like, laughing drunk, maniacally drunk, like, and you just you know it always makes me like viscerally uncomfortable that oh yeah especially when he's asking for the money he's like come on yes. it's, yeah, it's so uncomfortable long. and like yeah. long- I always maybe this is just me putting it on but I always feel like that's a moment where he's like I knew it mm-hmm. he's yeah, asking yeah, me totally. for the money you know I called it from the freaking get go you know, it's another should... instance where you know he, you know that he knows he's going to do something horrible to this person. Yeah. it's all over. Yeah, I was so watching. Man, I love that kind of cooking. That's great cooking for a good filmmaking. Um, I like yeah, this over. the scene preceding that where, where it the first beach. dawns on him on the beach because I was kind of like trying to look for what is the thing that triggers yeah. him. You know, because he's talking about camps. the farm and it's like the guy doesn't really say anything incriminating, but I think. Daniel is such a liar that he can see that he's evading it. Mm-hmm. He can he's like trying to, he's trying to trigger a memory, and the guy's not biting. He's going the peach tree dance. Take a few girls to the peach tree dance. Like I was like, sure, uh-huh. yeah, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. He's just totally yeah. And he's I'm like, when, this I'm, isn't genuine. I know what genuine looks like. 
I know what disingenuous looks like. They cut to the wide, and then and then he's on the sun, and the brother is completely on shadows. He's just covered. Yeah, he in shadow, leaves him in the completely on no. shadow. And you go like, ah, oh, there's something. Like, like sometimes he goes like, who is this guy? This is a shadow. This is not a person. This and that shadow. scene where he's in the water, if looks could kill, that is. Yes. That, that is oh the look yeah, of murder. Daniel Day is just in the. Just, I love that. Shot. I guess oh, that's my God. favorite moment. Uh, my favorite scene in the movie is any scene where Dan, you know that plain view has is going to. <laughs> He's yeah. noticed enemy. The last names. Those I mean, should I go to great. my favorite scene or should, should I? Because the last names, I think it means like like the, the Sunday, guys, Sunday plain and view. plain view. Like it's just too straightforward to who they are. Yeah, I mean, Wait, which, you know, you're saying the last scene, you said? but the they last are names. they're descriptive in a way that's oh, like oh, yeah, yeah, totally, what their yeah, roles Sunday. are or yeah, like what their lie is. Mm-hmm. You know, Eli's lie is that he's it's Sunday. He's a man of the church. That yeah. it's Sunday. Yeah, and you know. Plain view's lie is that it's plain. He's plain. He's plain to view. It's like the no. typical, uh, typical guy. I'm yeah. just, yeah. Oh, me. I'm just. I'm your plain. best friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm an yeah. oil man. I'm an Average oil man. Show, yeah. So what's what's your favorite scene then? My favorite scene, and and this is, I feel this is gonna, you're gonna find this interesting. My favorite scene is when he at the beginning of the movie when he falls, and then he breaks his leg, and then you hear him say something for the first time, and he says no. And then he just picks himself up. But that's the only that's thing. That's not the heard. first thing that he actually says. The first thing that he actually says is when he's digging with the rocks and he goes, There she is. He like I he finds the mineral that I he wants that. and he whispers it. He's like, No, no, he finds the mineral though after he breaks his leg. After he breaks his leg, he says no. Yeah. I think no is the first he, word. He doesn't ha- he's just uh, picking and then is he goes right? up, then he falls, and then he's screaming and he says no. And then when he's like getting better, he he finds it. But that's that's my favorite. See that because th- that whole sequence felt to me like not only the done like like not only like like you know like two thousand one space. It's like it's the beginning, and it's him telling life like you're not gonna beat me now. Like I'm gonna beat you. Like like so many people have just not been able to say no, and then just pull himself out of that well with a broken leg, and still just don't go to seek attention, just uh, medical attention. He just goes to sell that shit because he wants the land. And it's yeah. just like if you think about it, like like, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm taking this into this discussion, but you, when you think about like at least r- religious mythology, and you think that you think the Book of Genesis and all the time, and then the first ever thing that God actually tells humans is no, you can't eat this tree. That's the first like it's like the word no is a rebellion against nature. It's saying you are not controlling me. So it, yeah. it well, set kids the stand- say no before yes. That's it said sure. exactly. It set the standard for good and evil. If you say yes, then you're not changing anything. You say no, you're rebelling, and, and instantly becomes two yes different. Yes, is what a follower says. Exactly. Right? So then he we is like really no. Us the religious imagery in the movie yet. There is so much of it, and yeah. it's so, so much. right there. You know, it's not yeah. quite subtext. It's so Take us there. there. Take yeah, us yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty literal. It's just that you. You know. almost don't need to talk about it, but it is a major. Yeah. asset to the film there's a lot of yeah both with the oil mm-hmm. the baptism yeah fire and the fire one. constant fire yeah, rising totally raining um, the oil is everywhere like burbles up it showers down it's like it's like the frogs yeah. in magnolia it's like it's as big a like baptized oh, totally. i love how they're also not afraid to get that camera dirty it's a little bit of a side note oh, but, well done. Yes. Yeah. but like when the oil slick gets on the camera oh, or like that, that shot that tracking shot at the end of the bowling alley and he kicks the bucket mm-hmm. and it Fully splash the camera and they just keep it going. Yeah, like, yeah. It's the- I love bringing awareness to it, like bringing you to the point, like, oh yeah, there's a camera there, and they didn't mind; they just left it there. Yeah, you're a voyeur. You're watching. It yeah. reminds you. It reminds you that there is like people behind that camera. And it's like I don't know. It reminds you that it's a movie. Put things on the camera too. Even What's in that? Magnolia, there's a frog that lands right on the camera. Yeah, right. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Calls true. it out. Oh. Calls it out. <laughs> Pays attention to the fourth wall. Mm. I love the the church 2.0. Also, that big cross, just the yeah, way, oh yeah. the, mm-hmm. light. just that pure beam of light. It's so crazy. They love that on access, like talking to your church shot a lot. Like in the beginning, when Plain View, uh, Plain View's, you know, talking to people, he's like, "Well, I'm an oil man," and it's like almost same angle, same height, same everything as uh, whenever Eli's talking to his people. I guess let's uh, let's talk for a minute performance. So. Dan Lewis yeah. won an Oscar for this, right? Yeah, he was okay. Yep. He was okay. He was. He was <laughs> okay. I mean, like, how do you guys feel about his how, about the performances in general in the film? Like, um, are they Stellar. all that in a bag of chips? I I think it's, yeah, all that in a bag of chips. I mean, you know, 
Those two, I mean, everyone did. Are there good, specific yeah. things that kind of stood out to you performance wise, uh, Nick? Uh, man, it just felt like they gave, well, you know, which is not surprising from Daniel Day. Like everything I see him in, it just seems like he's really into it all the way. And, uh, and I love uh, Paul Dano. I think he's awesome. Very um, underrated. Highly underrated. Totally underrated. Yeah, he doesn't get enough stuff. I think a lot of it is just because he has a very character look. And so, you know, Hollywood doesn't cast him as much. But uh, those guys are just, uh, I, I don't even know what to say. They're so good. I mean, I think at one point, you know, because they give it their all and they're so into the character. I think Daniel Day-Lewis actually, like, broke a limb during the movie and then, like, wouldn't go to the hospital uh, because the because in 1896 they wouldn't have that kind of treatment. And he's so <laughs> All those Day Lewis stories. Anderson was like, "You have to go." To the, uh, yeah, like uh, it was something like. Just that. Take a like, break for a minute, Daniel. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like seriously. <laughs> Come back. Yeah, like, he's just he's so. You know. I one thing I love about. Paul Dano in this movie is just the shrillness of his voice when he starts getting oh, yeah. when he starts get like out. really get out yeah and it's got yeah. that like really kind of grating gravelly it just like yeah. it does it like so, so dichotomy like he's like the dichotomy of like it's just so opposite it's mm-hmm. yeah, like totally. a fair fight it's not a fair fight at all yeah between these two people it's like a pit <laughs> like, like ah yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he Lewis squealed. has such this commanding voice, and yeah, he's almost got this like he's yeah, squealing. He's, he's squealing when he's yeah. getting beaten. Screeching, he's like, squealing. Oh, yeah. yeah, he sounds yeah like an idiot. Yeah. You know, I can't even. You're gonna sound like a pig. I'll yeah. roll you around in the mud. Oh like, god, like, I mean, yeah. it's like uh, I I so much enjoy him dying. Um, <laughs> the, 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 and Isn't that another interesting it's thing? Franklin, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So like, just put him out of his oh misery. Oh God! It's just like it's like his character, <laughs> like Paul Dano's character, and his extrapolation. Well, to, especially at the end too, because he's like wearing all the jewelry. He's like by the end, oh, no, total, he's like, like televangelist, he's, yeah, like pimping, like with the chain. No, and, no, no, no. It's like it's like those these two characters embody the worst. What, if, what of have humankind. you done, Eli? What uh, sins? They have embody you done? the worst of yeah. humankind, and yet again, I sit, see, I sit here, and I feel. Even when I want them all to probably die, and I would think that the world would be a better place, I feel that nothing will humanity will get nothing done if we don't have people like that. Wow, that's it's really, so weird. Your takeaway is always so crazy. Oh my god, I'm so angry <laughs> yeah, inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but performance-wise, uh, another interesting thing is like Dan Delus has these moments where he's allowed to kind of get big with his performance, but like for the most part, every aside from those two. Every other performance in the movie is extremely subdued, like mm-hmm. to the point where people almost don't seem like they have emotions. Just like his, his totally. audience, Fletcher is like almost yep. silent in the background. Just they don't. They essentially don't. They you know, don't. They, they, yeah. He doesn't. The movie doesn't want them to. Yeah. He, these yeah. people have to stand out, and they're just background. Yeah, and I think it is. Play. I think it yeah. is kind Eli's of how dad is so monotone. I think it represents a little it's bit how odd, Daniel like, sees them. Very specific odd choice, especially for Paul Thomas Anderson. It was just like coming off of these Altman esque ensemble pieces, like full of people. Yeah, you know, and now Jam-packed. you're just in prison. It felt like. <laughs> He's yeah. like with two people. I, yeah, I think it represents how he sees people too, not like people. He just mm-hmm. sees them like objects. Mm-hmm. So they are just objects in the background. I love that at the in the last scene where he's talking to his son, not the last scene, but the one he's talking to his older yeah. son, and he wants to be alone. And he's like, eh, whatever. He hears everything I hear. And we don't even see the guy's face. Like, we never see that character's face. We don't know if it's the same. It's like not Fletcher anymore. It's yeah. just he's always got some, like, prop on the side to, like, make me look more human by association or something. You know one thing, you know one thing you made me remember that I, I forgot but now you just brought it up? It's What's like that? when Eli comes the first time, when, when, you know, when he walks and he says, I have something to tell you, um, just give me $500 and I'll give you the information. Oh, half Paul. Of, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, Paul. Like, half the conversation goes by before the camera shift and you figure out that he's not alone in that room. Then there is the other guy, mm-hmm. his, his, his right hand. And it's that, this is the kind, this would like, it's all dim light, it's all like very dark, and this is how things happen out there. That like you have the big guy who you go talk to, and then there is always somebody on the side you never notice is there. There's always that the always, guy, the right hand. That always made me uh, reminisce about like the Godfather a bit. It felt very Godfather. Oh, yeah. Gordon yeah. Willis, darkness, and you know, just very, you know, yeah, <laughs> like you're here, literally in a like cool like area the, over the there. The sanctness of it yeah. was creepy. And the power of it, you know, the implied, the self-appointed mm-hmm. power. 
Yes. Oh, totally. And then the threat at the end, where he's like, "If I if I go out there and I find out there's nothing, I'm going to take more than my money." Mm-hmm. Yeah. The but he gives him ten thousand. Is what we find out later. Yeah, yeah. He gives he gave him way more than he asked for, mm-hmm. uh, which is an oh, interesting. Oh, that's right. Take. Yeah. Because like he asked for five hundred, and then when he bullshits him, he's like six hundred. Yeah. He's like, I know I have something that's valuable to you. But then when he talks to Eli at the end, he says he gave him $10,000 right there. See, but I always didn't know if that was bullshit or not. I think because, it's real. Because yeah. I, you know, I I don't think, I mean, I know he's trying to, like, punish Eli there. Yeah, but, he's, yeah. Um, but I believe that story. I feel like he did okay. keep tabs on him just so that he could rub it in his face one day mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. nothing else. Because he does seem to keep tabs. He knows what's going on. Like, he keeps tabs on people. He is very well informed. Um but yeah, I, I I always thought that was just an interesting bit that he does like he pays him a lot. He pays him enough that like he can go and start I mean, a new life yeah, really easily. Yeah. Ten thousand dollars back then, it's like it's like, like paying him a hundred grand or more, uh, more, oh, more, way, more, way, way more, more, way. That's true. We're talking yeah. a century of inflation. Holy, that's true. yeah, yeah totally. no, I mean, oh wow, it's a lot. Yeah, you got hooked up. Yeah, I want it. I mean, sure. ten thousand is money today. Imagine back Shit, then. I'll take ten. Yeah, I'll, I'll take ten thousand a day. <laughs> Ah, oh, God. All right. Well, Should we're we running a little long, so I guess we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Um, you, you like when you mentioned uh, your favorite scene. I think you, you took your straw all the way to Mike, and you drink his milkshake. Yeah, I drink some <laughs> of Mike's milkshake. <laughs> you drink Mike's milkshake. You're a little late on that joke. Oh, right? God damn it! <laughs> I know. Right? I, was, I was waiting for someone to say milkshake the whole time. I was not gonna be the one. Damn it! Yeah. Um, no, well, okay. Like uh, about okay, the milkshake like, line, milkshake. I I I love that that line became popular because like I didn't see this movie in the theater. I saw it. I think the year no, it came out, DVD. but I saw it when it came out on DVD. Great yeah, theater. I bet. Yeah, I, I, I bet. Dude, I still remember seeing it in the theater. Yeah, I it's it's so cinematic. I'm sure it was mm-hmm. amazing in the theater. But I saw it later, and like I was waiting for the milkshake line on some level. And just because I'd heard people talk about this damn milkshake, what the hell are they talking about? Um, and I love that it's like it makes you wait the whole movie for it. So the fact that it became popular kind of I think it added something for me where it's like I'm waiting for this random line that I'm expecting to be just in the middle of the movie. And it's like yeah. all the way at the end. Um, I, I think it, it was also useful. I. I subjected my girlfriend to this movie. She was very like unnerved by the movie. You're not the whole together. time. She wasn't a huge fan. As it should be. Yeah. Was she and was, was a huge fan. She was a huge fan. Movie. I think she oh, appreciated like it. Top ten. She appreciated, but oh. like not in a hurry to watch it again. I love um, it. I thought you were gonna say that you're not together anymore. It's like I show her the movie. <laughs> yeah, 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 we broke up. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is in your top ten. You said Nick. Oh, totally. I, I mean, P.T. Anderson is like in my top three favorite filmmakers of all time. I love There's him, but I look forward to more. Currently, what's that? Say what? I look, there's nobody I look forward to more. Oh, absolutely, yeah, for sure. Uh, I can't wait for his next one, which is I didn't have see his Daniel last one, Day I again. Oh, yes, I hope that goes through. I hope everything is in the yeah. house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for we'll real. See. Yeah, it's an event. All right. Well, thank you guys all for joining. Um, You're gonna wrap you up. All right. Oh, so then we're not doing the scores. No, right? we are doing this course. Are we doing the scores? We're doing this course. But we're <laughs> already what? talking about this. The scores are gonna happen. All right. Yeah. Uh, what do you What do you score it? As so you know, say like, bye, they should just be. <laughs> I feel I feel that we should all give like one of us should give numbers from one to ten. One of us should be like A plus B don't plus. Don't tell me how to. Don't tell me how to. Score. <laughs> don't, don't tell yeah, me. Don't, don't tell me how to. You do <laughs> what you want to do. What I are you scoring? Jose? I am too conscious <laughs> to score this movie. You're I not going to score it. I mean, I don't feel like you stained last week. Like too. I feel, I feel that it's kind of like, like I feel that this movie deserves a ten, and for some reason, I feel like I should think a little more about it before I give a number because I don't think a right. ten would be. But all I right, don't so know. you'll you'll tell us next week about less, Maybe. last week episode. Let's say a nine. Good. I'm gonna That's say fun. nine. Nine. I'm gonna say nine a because nine. I don't like, and and it's honestly because I. Don't know what is wrong with it, but I know that there's something out there there's that some, would take that point out. That's, 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 that's every a movie. terrible. That's review. a weird way. I know. If you if you wrote a review that said I'm gonna give it a nine because I think there's something wrong, but I don't know what it is, people would be like, "Well, that could, like be a this new, guy. that could be a thing. It's just all pending reviews. You yeah, know, it's yeah. all <laughs> pending reviews. And, uh, I'm giving it. Just maybe I'll like, get to yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like I'm, I, I'm, I'm feel that I'm, I'm being too lenient. I feel that I'm so emotionally compromised by this movie that I'm not able to actually analyze it. Properly. But it made you feel that way. So it made me feel that way. It made so me feel like a, okay, whatever. We'll get to your score next week. What about you, Nick? 
I'm giving it 10 milkshakes. 10 milkshakes. That's 10 a lot milkshakes. of milkshakes. That's what it gets. 10 milkshakes. I mean, it's, it's you it's know, a lot of I, I don't know what I would change. I really don't know what I would change. I, I love it. What about you, Mike? It's not my favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie, but I do give it 10 out of 10. It's a, ma- it's a masterpiece. 10 out of 10. It's, what it's, a, do you know where it ranks in the P.T. Anderson good as scale? It can be. Just not my favorite type of movie that, you know, I still miss the old PTA a bit. Okay, so on the PTA score, what is it? That's my, my top three. Top okay. three. But I'm, that's a personal movie, though. I don't think, I don't expect people to feel the same way about Magnolia as I do. But I like Boogie Nights, too. I mean, I think, but I think it's a great film. I think it's one of the great American films, especially the last, you know, this is 2007. Yeah, so, 2009. You know, for me, it's between this one and Boogie Nights. Uh, I mean, this one's fresh in my mind because I just watched it, so it's probably it might I might call it my favorite as of right now for Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, the Boogie Nights is one of my. It's another movie that like really ranks up high for me. Boogie Nights. Um, I'll give it an impeccable. This movie is impeccable. Impeccable. That's not, that, 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 Imp- see, now I feel like an asshole. Impeccable. Right. I mean, if I had to put it in words. It is not you because we're on no, a podcast. No, stop it. <laughs> it is not you know like like I think That's I not... think that one of the things that need to be factored when you analyze or when you give score to things that are art is is how much do you want to go back to it. It entertained me. It was definitely way better now that I saw it because I've seen it only one time before this one. Mm-hmm. But it's not a movie that I will find myself saying. I will wait five years before I want to see this movie again. And that, to me, is impactful. That, to me, is impactful. That, to me, takes the point away. I feel not the same about this movie. For me, this movie, for whatever reason, is very easy for me to sit down and watch. Yeah, me too. Me too. Like, I've run into it. it. I ran into it. It it hits me on a good level. It doesn't matter what it's putting me through. I want to go back and witness that. Like, a few years ago, I came in. I was, like, channel surfing on HBO. And I came across it. And I just, like, couldn't put it down i was like oh i guess i'm watching this whole thing it was like i caught it kind of early and it was just like ah this movie is mesmerizing something about it i used to call it like my favorite slow movie your favorite Um, slow movie you know because it's almost three hours and it does have these sort of long scenes but like i just i can't pull myself away from this movie and it is a movie that like i could watch next week like for me personally um the the trick is that i'd like watching movies with people but it's hard to to get other people sometimes to sit down and watch. Yeah, that, that, watch that's what sports people too. I don't even give them a. I don't even ask them if they want to watch a movie. I just that's the way to do down. it, really. Is the way to do it? Because you know, like I, I feel this way personally <laughs> about movies where a lot of, and I've mentioned this to probably a couple of you guys, uh, where I don't always want to watch movies, but I'm always glad I did. So like, oh, if yeah, someone's just to show me a movie, I, that's almost better. It's like don't give me the option to say no. I do not. Yeah, no <sighs> option. Just sit down. Yeah, you'll like it. <laughs> you'll love it. All right, thank yeah. you guys so much for joining me. Um, once again, we had Nick Landa joining us uh, from Texas. Um, we have uh, uh, Michael joining us from upstate New York, Michael Smith. Do you have any uh, sort of anything you want to promote, like a blog or something that you would put out there? I, I very irregularly write a blog called Revisiting Films. It's under Mike. It's, I, I forget the uh, web address because it's mostly just me writing it for me. All right. Well, if you want to <laughs> but, send it to me later, I can put it up on the screen. Revisiting films. Michael Hawthorne Smith. Revisiting films. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, and we have uh, Jose. And Jose in Paradox. Uh, uh, in, that's in Instagram and, and, um, and Twitter. And Twitter. Yes. Okay. Your both names, same on, on both? Yeah. Oh, okay. no. Because last week you gave me a different No, it's true. Twitter, Twitter is Jose in Paradox, and Instagram is J A V S in Victor C H 2. All right. Uh, and I'm your host, John Olson. Uh, you can find me at John in Paradox. That's J O N in Paradox uh, on Twitter and Instagram, if you care. Um, but more importantly, follow the show. Uh, find us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash movie club collective. Uh, if you go there, like the page, uh, I update twice a week, put a post where you can find the show and a post for what the next movie will be. Uh, if you want to comment about the movie, uh, you can do that there. If you want to come onto the show, uh, or recommend a movie, you can just send a message to the Facebook page. Uh, next week's movie will be... Can I get a drum roll? All right, you got to work on your drum roll. It's just... It's, all right. It is Galaxy Quest. Which uh, one? Galaxy Quest. <laughs> so anticlimactic. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. We timed out terribly. Um, <laughs> yeah, big left turn. I wanted something a little palate cleansing after There Will Be Blood. <laughs> Heavy. 
You know, heavy milkshake. Now you need like a little something to wash it down. Yeah. A weapon in the mint. That um, movie will be a straight up ten. Galaxy Quest, uh, rated PG. It's an hour and forty two minutes. Came out in nineteen ninety nine, um, starring Tim Allen and Sigourney Weaver. And the late and a great bunch of Alan Rickman. The late great Alan Rickman. Yes. The wonderful Tony Shalhoub. Yes. The always great Sam Rockwell. The only so Sam many, Rockwell. Yeah. So many good that? people. I thought he was in that. The only Who? my favorite. Sam Rockwell. <laughs> He's got Yeah, in that movie. He's yeah. so good. It's one of his best also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you okay. can find it currently on Netflix. Mm-hmm. So if you have Netflix, you have no excuse not to watch it. Yeah. Find a friend. Watch it together. Talk about it. Enjoy it. Enjoy Come watch the show. Comment. All right. Peace, guys. Till next week. This has been a J Squared production. <laughs>